That took me a minute, I couldn't figure out where the record button was. What? <laughs> How you doing? Ah. Uh, I want to give this a one shot because uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, photography and starting up and the costs of starting up in photography and why people shouldn't be put off and and, and stuff like that. But uh, uh, yeah, I was going to do some like a, a more look at stuff way and examples and fluff, but I just, I just haven't bothered. Also, if you can hear kids screaming or screaming in the background. It's not here, it's my neighbours, they're doing something with their children, I don't know. Um, bit of a glass house thing going on at the moment. Um, seeing as they had a word with me the other day for making too much noise. <laughs> uh, you know, they're making, they've made enough noise over the last couple of days that my two boys don't really want to be here. So, uh, at the moment. Uh, but... Today has been neat. I have burnt literally two, two and a half hours in Mario Party on the Switch with the boys. And I hate Mario Party on the Switch. I hate Mario Party. I don't really like... Mario Party's gotten kind of stale for me. And Mario Party on the Switch just makes it even worse. Because... It's stupid. <laughs> um, so look... Like, I was supposed to play Mario Party with the boys yesterday, and I, and I didn't, and I said, look, I promise I'll play today, and literally the first thing they said to me when I woke up, like, can we play Mario Party together, I was like, okay, that's not a problem, I've got Joy-Con sword, we can play, because you can only play with Joy-Cons as well, they've, one of the things that annoys me, one, Mario Party hasn't realistically changed since, like, Mario Party on, Mario Party first time was like the, um, N64, like every iteration of Mario Party has basically just been the same game with different mini games, you know. But then the new one comes out and it's like, yes, yeah, just you know the same board gamey style gameplay, but now we're going to force you to use Joy Cons to do motions that you could have realistically done on, a lan on an analog stick or something, um, and, and which just annoys me so much. My favorite Mario Party game is Sonic Shuffle on the Dreamcast. There you go. But yeah, we, we played for a few hours, and um, the boys, we only played like two games, I think, and the boys said, well, William said to me, he said, you know, um, it doesn't matter if you lost as long as you had fun, because I lost. It was, I mean, it was really close. One minute I was winning, then they made a massive comeback, then it looked like I was going to win, and then they just steamrolled me towards the end. And he say, yeah, it doesn't matter um, if you win or lose as long as you had fun. And he's like, you had fun, right? And I was like, Mm, no, buddy. Like, you guys know I don't like Mario Party. I really don't like Mario Party. So I, I didn't have fun, but I did enjoy spending time with you and your brother. I didn't like the game, but I did enjoy hanging out with you guys. That part was fun. So, you know, I I made a bit of a compromise there. I didn't just flat out say, God, it sucks and I hate you guys. And then walked off. But, you know, ah, I don't like Mario Party. Mario Party. Um, sometimes it's fun, but other times it's like when it's when you've got like four people together or having like I think Mario Party is only four players, but like you know when you've got four people together and, and both teams have got human players on them and, and, and all that, it's, it's great fun. But just sometimes you just it's, it's not it's not a thing. It's not a thing. Uh, and it takes so long! <sighs> it takes so long, it's worse than a game of Monopoly, it just makes you want to pull your hair out. And I went down to the local chippy. Does anyone remember the um, chip shop that uh, closed in Alton Broad? It's called Fast Foodies. Uh, it's been renamed the Mermaid. It's now under uh, new management. Apparently, it was Mermaid before it was Fast Foodies. Fast Foodies went bust, and then the, the new people have called it Mermaid again. Um, went in there, um, got us some chips. I like supporting local business, so when the new management came in, all the new owners came in, and they opened up, and they they started frying. I was like, bam, I'm in there. You know, I just I said to him, do you fancy some chips? Like, I'm out with the dog, do you fancy some chips? So we got um, sausage and chips, and I bought mine. No, all right. So if anyone's in Alton Broad, and you uh, you fancy some chips, Alton Broad last stuff, and you fancy some chips, the dolphin down by Everest, dolphin, mermaid down by Everest Park is um, pretty good. Dolphin's another one down, on, um, down in town by Bevan Street. And that used to be really good back in the day. I used to go there a lot um, during college. But anyway, 
Uh, yeah, so I got that, and then um, we hung out for a bit. Me and Inky streamed some Destiny 2, only to find that uh, Inky had picked one of the DLCs to play through, um, the one based on the Hive, and uh, we couldn't play it. Let's do the intro mission. And I said, oh, you don't own it. And I was like, I'm sure we own all the DLC for Destiny. Apparently not. Uh, we then realised that the, the, the other DLC, we looked up what order the DLCs were in because we had two left to do. And it turns out we picked the wrong one. We picked the newest one. We were meant to pick the older one um, with Prisoner of Elders and Cade 6 at the start. Um, so we went and, and started some of that and I had no end of technical difficulties trying to stream it. Because um, I am using a super low end machine right now because I've dismantled most of the stream rig up here to avoid winding people up. Um, but no, it was it was still fun. My God, the intro to to that DLC. Uh, what was it? Forsaken, Shadow Keep. It's one of the two. Which what's the what was the last one? The, not the newest one. The one before it. Cracking opening. If you like K6, brilliant opening. Um, really, really good. Really, really fun. Uh, but then after after a couple hours, we decided to call it done, and that leads us to now. Oh. Uh, Ink used the sharks today. Love them. The hoovers and the mop and, and all that kind of stuff. Things are great. Carpets feel clean. It's insane. Uh, we've probably just been pushing dirt around for months since the last hoovers were not so great, or the last hoover we had was not so great. Uh, lost all lost all pole. Like there was nothing. Like, I can remember once upon a time where I almost just throw my shoulder out uh, using the hoover when I blew my arm out and I had to go in and have surgery. Like using the hoover would cause my shoulder to start to separate. Um, it's pretty much the same groove I get with this new one. So it's not that my shoulder was getting stronger, it just turns out the hoover was getting weaker. The more you know. Now, uh, this is supposed to be about photography. <laughs> and it's taken me a while to get there. But I want to throw out there that um, if you want to get into photography, studio photography or any other kind of photography, it's not actually that expensive. A lot of people seem to think that photography is this super expensive, super brutal uh, you know, thing to get into, um, but they don't, there's a few things they don't think about. So, um, I want to just make this clear, resolution, megapixels, and, um, tack sharp lenses, sharpness, mean nothing. They mean absolutely nothing. If you are good enough to take a picture on an older camera, you can get that same image on a newer camera. And hopefully the other way around, unless you're using all of the aids that newer cameras have built in. But, you know, a picture doesn't instantly become crap because it wasn't taken on, you know, a 20 or 40 megapixel full frame camera. Um, it doesn't instantly become crap because it's not tack sharp. Now, admittedly, would a tack sharp image be better? Yeah, um, depending on what you're shooting, but not having something completely sharp isn't necessarily a bad thing. Same with lenses, by the way. You don't need to have tack sharp lenses. An, 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 an image does not have to be pin sharp to be good. Some of my favourite images throughout my life were taken at 640 by 480. Not even one megapixel. Would I bin them because they're not high res? No, God no. Um, those are cracking moments in my life that I'd like to keep, regardless of resolution. Does it make they're not bad pictures? You know, they're not tack sharp either. They're not going to be at that res. I'm not going to be able to blow them up on a you know, a, a massive in a, into a massive print, but that again, that doesn't matter. The image exists, it's there, it's a moment captured. No, you're not going to be able to, even with the newest cameras on the market, be able to nail focus every single time. You're not going to be able to do it. Um, even if you've got the highest resolution camera on the planet, you are not going to be able to nail it every single time. So you don't realistically need to go out and spend money on super sharp lenses, high resolution cameras, um, if you want to get started, you can go super cheap. Okay, so let's say you want to do low key portraiture, low key, high key portraiture, stuff like what I've been doing recently. I showed a picture off the other day, um, a low key portrait done with a speed light. Um, 
you could do that on the cheap, not second hand, but on like, you know, super budget, not, you know, lower build quality gear, you could do it for about 150 bucks. What does 150 bucks buy you? Well, that will get you maybe two newer speed lights, um, newer being the brand. Um, they do um, loads of loads of stuff like electronics and, and, and all that. I think they even do a lens. They do some lenses now uh, based on other camera stuff. But um, yeah, you can buy some newer flashes, um, two newer flashes, two newer triggers, uh, and then say buy background, um, yeah, background and stands, uh, some modifiers like some shoot through umbrellas, uh, maybe a softbox or grids, reflectors, you know, all of that for about 150 pounds. That's new. It's not the best quality gear. I mean, the only stuff I'd say you'd probably want to kind of upgrade in the future are maybe the flashes. But then that it doesn't take a huge amount to upgrade from the newer stuff to, uh, say, Godox. You know, buy a trigger for thirty pounds and uh, one of their smaller flashes. You buy, you know, these two together will come in, depending on where you shot, for about hundred pounds. Not super powerful. If you want more powerful, you go with this one, but then you're talking about, it's about 150, no, wouldn't it be 150, maybe 120, 130 for the bigger one versus the little one, but it depends what you want to shoot. If you just want to get your feet wet, go with the cheaper one, because you're still going to produce light and you're still going to have to learn how to use it. And how you use this is going to be no different than how you use this, just this is going to produce more, this is going to produce more light than this. This is going to be more useful longer than this. All right, so 150 bucks. If you want to spend 200, 250 bucks, you can upgrade to, um, you know, your next level of gear. Cameras. You don't need to go out and buy Panasonic GH5, Sony A7R or S, whatever the newest one is, uh, the newest Canon, the newest uh, Nikon, Nikon, whatever. You don't need them. You don't. Are they nice? Yes. But if you're just starting out and you don't know if this is something you want to do, it's not something you need to buy. One of my favourites. Uh, Canon EOS M Generation 1. It's 100 bucks. 100, 150 bucks with a lens. Again, you don't need a tack, tack sharp lens. You don't need them. You don't need them. You don't even need fast apertures. You're working with flash. You don't need like a Oh, I need an f1.2. You don't, because you're taking a portrait. And most stuff I shoot with flash, shooting at f8. No need to have an. I don't need a lens that goes down to f1.2 if I'm shooting at f8. Don't need a, a 2.8 if I'm shooting with ambient light. Maybe I'll need them faster apertures. Maybe if there's something style style-wise I want, like a shallower depth of field, then I'd want the the uh, you know wider apertures, but not necessary. No, hundred bucks. Yeah, Pentax Q. Absolutely love this. Taking some of my favourite photos on the planet with a Pentax Q. Um, this is the um, five to fifteen standard zoom. It's not actually. It's, it's um, five mil on this, but it equates to I can't remember. Like, is this like the twenty four seventy or whatever on? Yeah, it's about the twenty four seventy, I think. Um, on on whatever F uh, full frame equivalency. The only, by the way, the only reason you need equivalency in cameras and lenses is so that you know what your field of view is going to be with any particular piece of equipment. So, um, as I just said, like if you look at, if you say were to go, I've got a full frame camera here and I have a twenty four seventy, and this is just the right thing in my environment to get the picture I want. Um, and then you go out and buy. Something that says, you know, whatever to whatever on another camera. And like, where do I get the 2470 on, say, a Panasonic or whatever? Um, that's when you have to look at equivalency. To, so that you get the same field of view, the same zoom range per lens, per piece of equipment or whatever. That's the only time that's important, by the way. Um, otherwise, it's, it's, it's not important. Like, right now, you're like, well, you just said this a five... 
to 15 scans. That's like super wide, isn't it? No, not on this camera, it isn't. The equivalent is... Let's pretend it's 24 or 70. I'm not doing the maths. I can't remember what the crop factor is on this camera anyway. Don't worry about crop factor either. Again, not important. Um, but again, you don't, you don't need brand new tax sharp gear to, to get the job done. So there's, you know, um, EOSM, Pentax Q. Pentax Q is about 100 bucks, I think. You might be like, depends, like 100 pounds for Gem ones, maybe 200 for, for the newer ones. Um, go out and buy a Canon 60D. Canon 60D is probably about 200 bucks second hand. Um, you don't, you know, go onto the second hand market. You don't need, again, you don't need a super high res camera. It doesn't need to be tack sharp. It doesn't need to have continuous AF in video or whatever, unless you're shooting video, but then learn your manuals. Loads of people are still shooting video on stuff like these without all their magical uh, modern tools. Right now, I could be shooting, I'm shooting this on a Panasonic GH5. I could be shooting this on the Canon 60D and you wouldn't know a difference. Realistically, this is poorly lit, right? It's high ISO. It's uh, lower resolution than what the camera can kick out anyway. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I promise you that. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. If I set them up right, you wouldn't know the difference. Um, you know, so you, by all the camera needs to realistically do, if you're going to do flash photography, is go into manual mode and be able to trigger a flash. That's it. So it could be Nikon D40 from millions of years ago, Canon 60D from like 2010, 2011, um, the failed EOS M Mark I. It doesn't need to be super hardcore. You'll still get good results and you'll learn how to use, you'll learn photography for cheap. You know, you can get these for cheap. You can get the lenses for reasonable prices. Um, you can adapt um, uh, C-mount lenses to things, like, um, uh, oh, what the hell are they called? Fujian 35s? Uh, they're screw-mount, um, CCTV lenses. They used to be used in cinema back in the day, but you, you can, you still, you buy them for, like, 20 bucks, stick them on the front of your camera, and they look pretty good. I've taken some pretty nice pictures with those, too. You don't need to break the bank to, to do... Photography. You don't need new equipment to do photography. That's the first place you'll look. You'll go onto YouTube buying guides and stuff like that, and they'll tell you you need this, you need that. But if you're just getting your feet wet and you want to learn how to, you know, use flashes and 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 stuff like that, or you just want to learn how to do landscapes, um, most cameras are going to do the job. If you can slap them into manual mode, you're good to go. If you can trigger a flash. You're good to go, depending on what you want to shoot, obviously. You know, portraits, you might want to use flash. Uh, landscapes, you're not going to really use flash. Um, you want to do astral photography. Just grab a, a, an ancient old camera and, and uh, you know, put it into, into bulb mode or whatever. And, uh, or, or manual mode for however low you can. Do some maths, get a nice, reasonably wide lens um, with a reasonable aperture. Job done. You can buy those for like a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, like lenses for astral photography. Will they be great? No, but um, you know, <laughs> are they going to be award winning? You never really know. They might not be great if you're just starting, but you know, the, the greats of yesteryear didn't have half of the stuff we have now. Um, and I can, I'm pretty sure that even if you give them a suck ass camera, they're still going to be better than, well, they're going to be better than I am. They'll probably be better than you are. Um, so, yeah, you don't even need to buy triggers. If you want to get into flash, you can just buy a, a wire, stick something to the hot shoe of your camera, and then uh, you know you can run that to the to your flash. As long as that, I think it's the center pin, the big fat pin here that fires the uh, fires the flash. As long as that uh, makes connection with the flash wherever I put it. Uh, was in front of me a minute ago, wherever. As long as it makes connection to the fat pin on that, bam, you can put them into manual mode and fire them. You know, you can just walk over to the camera, uh, walk over to the flash and adjust on the back if you need to make adjustments. Um, you know, uh, my Fuji, so recent purchase, was cheap as all hell. This lens is a disgusting plastic thing that I got the other day that I wanted to talk about at the same time. Um, 
and and you know it's dis it's disgusting. It's plastic. The focus is trash on it. Well, not the focus. Like I mean, listen to this. It's all plastic. It just spins. It's all fly by wire. There's no end to it. And the the zoom in and out. There is no spin to it. It's like a switch. That's it. That is it. It'll go zoom in, zoom out. But you can still take cracking pictures with it. It's not tack sharp, but you can still take good pictures with it. It's not built very well, but you can still take great pictures with it. Um, if you then find you like it, if you then still you find you like photography, you like the the maths behind it, a bit the science behind it, the creativity behind it. Then go and spend money on other gear. But literally, sell a studio for 150 bucks. 150 bucks for your equipment, for your, your flashes and your modifiers and, and stuff like that. Um, and buy a camera for 150, 200 bucks. Buy um, like some seven artisans lenses for 130 pounds, 150 pounds. You could literally be good to go for, say, the higher end on flashes. Say higher end, like slightly higher than lower end or bottom end. Uh, say 600 quid? 600 quid. Less than you'd buy a, a middle of the road camera body now. Like if you were to look for the uh, the Fuji um, XT30, is about 800 quid, I think, with a lens. Um, you could go all in and get lights and, and, and modifiers and, and a, a cheap second-hand camera body and, uh, you know, a lens or two and... Give it a go, um, if anyone's interested. Don't go thinking you need to go buy big. Uh, don't think you have to go buy fancy or expensive or name brands, just... You could even do flash photography with a point-and-shoot. Just a cheap and nasty point and shoot. Uh, one of my favourite um, strobists is uh, Zach Arias, and he did a um, uh, what is it? Cheap camera po pro tog challenge on Digital Rev TV years and years and years ago. I like Zach. He seems like a nice guy. I think I've mentioned him in a few videos recently because he reminds me of another uh, another guy named um, Arthur. Arthur does um, Linux videos. He shoots on the OSM now. I'd like to find someone that could actually find something to complain about with Arthur's video. If you look at Arthur's video on an EOSM versus, uh, say, Gardner, the Linux gamer, who shoots on a G85, I think, um, with 4K capabilities and all that, I would argue that Arthur's stuff is better than Gardner's. Um, yeah, uh, Zach Arias does, does this video, and he's literally shooting on... He's got his, this cheap flash... Um, and a camera that's not even compatible. He puts the flash into slave, um, and it's, it's flash triggered. So the flash on the little point and shoot camera goes off, like the little Kodak knockoff, whatever camera it was. The flash goes off on that, which is largely an automatic or whatever. He then, which then triggers the opti that's on, on optical slave mode. So then it realizes that this flash has gone off. That flash will then go off. Hi, Inky. Hey! What's up? We've been for a very big walk. Really. I have noticed. How are you? How are you? Ugh. He's like, we went round where you used to live. Did we? Did you? Did, yeah. did we? I can't speak today. Oh, but I fucked my knee. Right, don't fuck your knee. I'm going to have a shower in a bit and then get in bed. Yeah, cup of tea? Yeah, I'm just drinking the one that you made before. Okay. Perfect drink drinking temperature. So we can't speak. Drunken temperature. <laughs> Drunken temperature. Because we saw our favourite characters get shot. I'm still devastated about that. I cried on the walk. I had a bit of a sob and I thought, I'm so glad Nick's not here to see this. Oh, bless you. <laughs> this is, because I've never got upset about a character dying before. Yeah, but it was a character you really liked. I've never got, have I? I've never got into a character this hard got like, oh, he's fucking cool. I fucking love him. I think he's brilliant. Rodney Mullen. <laughs> You know how I feel towards Rodney Mullen. But he's a real person, isn't he? Yeah, skateboarder. Shut up, they're not here. How was you looking for the boys? Yeah. Yeah, he's going around looking for the kids. Dad's never got proper into a character before. No. Bless you. No. Like, because all the other characters I like are still alive, aren't they? Yeah. 
I didn't like Ares, so I'm glad she died. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. <sighs> and then, and then she got Z Zach. There you go. Yeah, because you wouldn't even finish no. Final Fantasy VII because wouldn't of Zach. Finish it. Zach Fair uh, from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, wouldn't fucking finish it. Wouldn't play Crisis Core either. Yeah, because I thought that was so unfair. No, there you go. Because I got, I got, I got to. I wouldn't finish uh, Crisis Core, would it? No, you didn't even. You didn't even start Crisis Core for a time. Like, no, I know how it's going. It was, uh, it was seven you wouldn't finish because there was that one particular part that you could see what happened to Zach and you weren't having that's it. it. I'm not having it. <laughs> so, like, no, I'm sorry, I can't. That do took this. you absolutely years to finish that game. <laughs> it was until what we moved here I finished it. No, no, I, we, I think we did have that race, but then you still, it was still a push to get you to finish it, yeah. Yeah. Because you finished it before I did. Yeah. Even though I started it before you did. Yeah. I got to level 30 and beat the snake. Yeah, well, because that was the rule, wasn't it? We weren't allowed to use the chocobos to get across the... Because um... I could never catch one. That's fair. Do you know, that's, that, that is why. So, but the thing is, that once you grind it, it's really easy. Yeah. Anyways, I'm about to run out of battery. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry. I, I had a bit of a that's, sob. That's all right, that's... I was like, I'm not letting him You've see. even... Let's put it this way. You've even got a deck of cards for that character. Yeah, I have, yeah. And that you carry around with you. Yeah. And we have a little statue of the little guy downstairs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gutted. I'm absolutely fucking gutted. Damn it. <laughs> fucking, that's the only reason why I was like, yeah, Destiny 2, yeah, I'll fucking play it. Is Cl Clyde in there, Clyde? And you're like, yeah, 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 just don't watch it. No, it was because when the, when the new expansion came out, I was trying to hide that trailer from you for ages. And I was like, why is he getting... Oh, my God. So, um, I will revenge him. But I don't, I don't like revenge because it's not going to bring him back, is it? I like revenge. Revenge yeah, is fine. But fun. do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not going to bring him back. No, so of course. What's the point of revenge? It's fun. Yeah, there's that. But <laughs> but you know what I'm trying no, to say. No, I know. There, is, you know, there are certain people that you can't, you won't, you wouldn't get back at. Yeah. Because it doesn't really mean anything if you do. Yeah. But all these lot, like, apart from the fact that I worked it out when I was on the walk, because he has his gun, and that's. And the 44 is turned around and said, mm. can you go get his gun? Because I'm sorry, I don't want a dickhead like him carry it. I was like, oh, thank God for that. Okay, I'll go get his gun then. Yeah, I'll go get that back. I'm fine with that. But, yeah. That was one of my favourite parts where they're, they're, they're literally, they're all like, no, we, we, we can't go and we can't go and avenge him. We can't because, you know, we've got stuff we have to do. We have to be, you know, the guardians of the city. And then your character's like, fuck, fuck yeah. that. Oh, I'm going to go kick the shit out of him. It's like, Good man. <laughs> yeah, her, my character's voice, and she's like, well, I've known. I'm like, who the fuck is that talking? Mm -hmm. And I realised it's me. Yeah, she would get an aggro sound. You two don't have to. I'll do it. You do your job. I'll do mine. But you'll have to take on everyone all by yourself. Like, I haven't done that before. Yeah, for fuck's sake. Like, you guys ever fucking help me. Cade wanted to, but you wouldn't let him out. I understand why you wouldn't let him out. <laughs> <laughs> why did you let him out? Because everyone gets sad when, when he leaves. Uh, do you think they just couldn't afford to pay him to stay doing it, the actor? Don't know. I hope that is the reason. Not like I said, I reckon it's because they needed motivation to make you go and fight the other team. What were they going to do, realistically? They can't, like, oh, hey, zelvala has been killed. What has Zalvala done that's made you like him throughout the entire game? Nothing. He's an ass. Will you please stop sniffing your poncho? I'm just making sure it smells nice. Just stop it. Okay. You're supposed to be happy in a poncho, not being like, oh yeah, poncho. I <laughs> so am happy. Just, <laughs> sniffing it and I rubbing against it. Is, I'll be like a cat. I was crying in the poncho, so I took it off so I could cry out of the poncho. <laughs> so I wouldn't have an unhappy moment in my poncho. Once I was done, I was like, like appreciate the poncho. Put, it back <laughs> put a bag on, put your hood up. Yeah, I did. Right, no. You. Get. <gasps> she shot me! Get downstairs. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, at least you can't get cut out of my Kim shirt. Yeah, but I'll be cut out of my poncho, then I'll have to kill people. <laughs> See, you'd, get a, you'd, you'd, have, uh, you'd seek revenge for your poncho. Yeah. <laughs> but this is in the real world. <laughs> well, I suppose. Bless her. Where my actions have actual consequences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
let's finish look finish this up because it's going on and on and on forever this is that's one way you'll know that this isn't shot on a 60d because the 60d would cut out after 12 minutes um yeah um so zach's given a cheap camera cheap flash and is told look go for it you know go take some nice pictures and he manages to get some nice fucking pictures what he does is he takes the the strobe that isn't compatible with the camera at all it's just a point and shoot i think the only thing he had on it was um iso control uh it couldn't even control the the flash on the camera because it just had to be in a sufficiently dark area for the camera to auto trigger the flash so every photo he takes has to be in a dark area he sets the ca uh, the flash to optical slave and is now holding it off camera takes the picture flash goes off on the camera sets off the trigger here that then lights the subject, job done. Still gets good pictures. You do not need expensive equipment to get into photography. You don't. If you want to learn the, the, the basics of photography though, go out and buy a camera that will let you put it into manual. And that's pretty much the most important thing. Doesn't matter how old it is, how new it is, um, what the processor is in it, um, you know how big the sensor size is, none of that is important. If you find that you enjoy photography after that point, go out and buy new gear. Go out and buy new stuff. You might find that you don't like digital photography at all. Um, you might want to try film photography. Go do that. That's pretty cheap to get into as well. You can get a uh, really solid um, Pentax K1000 for 150 quid. 150 quid, 35mm film camera, all new seals and everything. Um, you know, new battery, light meter works, no leaks, no nothing, job done, um, with a solid 50 mil lens, um, and you're good to go. Just go buy film and go, go nuts. You know, don't worry about buying, um, high end lights and high end modifiers and things like that, because you don't know, initially you ain't going to know if you like it or not. Some of my favorite shots, in fact, one of my favorite flash shots, um, that I mentioned before, the one that I took at Scribs years ago. I believe was either a shoot through umbrella on a on a ten pound stand, so it's probably a fifteen quid twenty quid setup. Um, black sheet in the background uh, and a bare. If if I used a modifier, I think one of them was done with a with a shoot through umbrella, and um, I've done others bare bulb. Like literally, what what I mean by bare bulb is like you just take take the speed light and you don't put anything over it nothing to soften or diffuse the light at all you just fire it directly at the thing that you're shooting it at you know you just like point it pew, done um and that's it you know um try it just try it it's not expensive don't go worry about reviews what youtubers are saying what bloggers are saying because nine times out of ten, they're largely full of shit and are trying to get you to buy expensive equipment. They are trying to push their thing. And that's not particularly good for beginners or people who just want to try this shit. Same with guitars. You, know, you don't need to go out and buy a 600 quid guitar or a thousand pound guitar to learn guitar. You know? You can go out and buy, just go out and buy something cheap or find something from a second-hand shop. Um, and if you need to do some repairs on it, like adjusting like truss rods or uh, restringing it or, or anything, that's things that you learn. You're going to learn these things, which will eventually make you better if you stick with it. Um, same with the microphones, audio, video, whatever. You don't need high-end gear to get good results. You don't. Just practice. Practice, 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 practice. You don't need 60 megapixels, 50 megapixels. You know, you can get away with 8 megapixels. 8 megapixel camera, you know, 16 megapixel camera, doesn't matter. Did the camera come out this year or did it come out 10 years ago? Doesn't matter. Um, as long as you can do the foundations of what you want with that camera and that equipment, it's all that matters. You'll learn the rest. You'll find it's all about solving problems and you'll figure that out as you go. You don't need to spend a lot of money to do it. Good pictures are good pictures regardless of sharpness and resolution. If you're taking pictures of, you know, people at gigs and uh, all of a sudden, you know, 
So you're not, like I said, you're not going to now focus every time because life ain't like that. All of a sudden you're focused, you're ready, you've got one picture, you then got to take another picture, just slightly different. You know, and all of a sudden the lead singer or guitarist jumps like a foot and a half back and it's completely out of focus. I know you might cause some cool motion blur. And ideally, don't throw away photos either, even if they're misses, because they could they could prove useful later. Anyway, that's that's that. Don't think you need a lot of money to do this. I'm gonna head off. Go to bed. I didn't explain this very well. It's just the same with the whole guitar thing. When when we're all talking about getting back into guitar and music again, you don't need to go and spend a lot of money. Go to the land of broken dreams, eBay, and buy up other people's lost dreams or broken dreams. You know, where other people have bought expensive gear and failed. Um, you know, this camera years ago would have been worth thousands of pounds. I got it for like a hundred, two hundred bucks. You know, lens is a hundred and fifty. And it still takes cracking pictures. So, <laughs> you just... Anything will do. This was a commercial failure. Doesn't make it a bad camera. This was a commercial failure. Doesn't make it a bad camera. Um, they're all old, but they're all good. They'll all do what I want them to do, and they'll all do what you want them to do. Um, just learn it. I mean, here's the thing. Turn this off. Oh no, look, the image is really, really shitty. Learn some lighting too, and uh, you know, you might find that um, <laughs> even the worst gear can give you good results when you learn how to shape light, when you learn how to control light. Anyway, I'm heading off. Hope you're well. And I'll see you all with a bit of luck tomorrow. Just learn, have fun with it. Doesn't have to be sharp, doesn't have to be high res, doesn't have to be in color. Just go out there and shoot. Go out and have fun.